the boot sector is the very first sector inside our file system. So just uh, be aware that the organization of uh, this drive that we're using as an example is that uh, basically we have the entire drive. So this is this is the drive. Inside the drive, um, we have partitions. And so this partition that contains uh, this file system uh, is right here, right? So this is our partition. And basically it's only a subset of information on this entire drive. There could be even multiple partitions. Inside that partition, pretty much at the beginning, right here, the very first sector inside this partition is this VBR, volume boot record or boot sector. So it's, sometimes it's called boot sector, sometimes people refer to it as volume boot record. It's the same thing because file system is, the second name for the file system is a volume. And so this volume boot record at the very beginning here, uh, it, it actually serves two purposes. The first purpose that it, it serves, of course, it's describing information about the file system itself. For instance, it tells um, the, the operating system that we have two FAT, uh, file allocation table uh, uh, structures, FAT1 and FAT2. FAT2 is like a backup copy of FAT1. So you really have to be working with one of them. You don't have to worry about the second one. It's the file system that automatically makes updates in both of them. Uh, also, um, uh, it tells us, uh, um, depending uh, of the file system on FAT16, um, uh, we have to also specify the root directory size because the root directory uh, on FAT16 is limited uh, in its size. And then it also tells us where the data area is. So it's first we have parameters. And the second uh, uh, purpose uh, of the boot sector is that uh, this uh, uh, file system can be bootable. So it can have an operating system. In that case, uh, the boot sector will contain the initial code to execute when uh, the system will be loading uh, from this partition. All right, so uh, so that's the information about the boot sector. And uh, overall uh, layout of the file allocation table file system is uh, pretty simple. Um, this um, uh, reserved area actually contains, uh, as I said, uh, volume boot record. Here it's just everything is sorted alphabetically. But this is this volume boot record is located at the at the, at the very beginning of uh, of the drive right here. So the volume boot record is right here. More space there could be a space reserved for more sectors in the reserved area because an operating system could place here bootable code. The sectors that contain additional bootable code uh, that can be loaded uh, at the time when the operating system is loading. Then we have this FAT area. So the FAT area contains these two uh, file allocation tables, right? So the two tables are right here. So we call them FAT area. And finally, the rest is the data area. And uh, um, on, uh, on our system, FAT16, uh, the first uh, information that can be uh, found uh, uh, here is uh, the directory. Right, so the, the directory will be uh, somewhere here. So that's the that's the first thing. The root directory will be found right here, and the rest will be unallocated space, which can be allocated for uh, for data files and subfolders or subdirectories. Okay, so um, there is a little bit of difference between uh, uh, FAT16 and FAT32. And I'm not discussing here FAT12. This is a floppy uh, drive uh, system, and they're, they're very similar, FAT12 and FAT16. Uh, so the layouts, um, the difference uh, between those two layouts is, is as follows. Well, first of all, um, the, uh, the reserved area is the same, the same idea for the reserved area. File allocation uh, table uh, area, 
uh, is the same idea right here. Uh, typically, there are two fat, fat allocation tables. Now, uh, uh, in, uh, in case of FAT16, the root directory is located right at the beginning. And it's space reserved when we format the drive. So it has a limitation of how many directory entries it can contain. This limitation is removed on FAT32. On FAT32, root directory is stored just like any other file or any other directory. So it's not really, it does not really have to be right next to the uh, file, uh, uh, file allocation table area. It can be really anywhere. So it can be just, it doesn't have to be attached there. And it can also grow, right? So if we add more entries, it can become uh, larger. So it's more flexible on FAT32. All this information and on both system is coming from the volume boot record or boot sector right at the beginning of the drive. Okay. And uh, you can see that here, um, volume boot record uh, has a little bit of different uh, difference in, uh, in its uh, um, structure. Here, for example, we specify the number of root directory entries. So that defines how big the root directory uh, is. Um, on FAT32, uh, the difference here is that we specify the root directory starting location. Basically, here um, there is a, a cluster, uh, the starting cluster, uh, pointer to the start, uh, starting cluster of the root directory. So this is, this is different, right? Uh, because right here we always know that right after the FAT area, this is where the root directory uh, is located. So there's a little bit more flexibility with FAT32 uh, system in, in, in comparison to FAT12 and FAT16. Okay, so cluster is a group of consecutive sectors. It's important because uh, the cluster is physically read uh, from the drive and written to the drive as block of sectors. It's one unit. Uh, the sector is usually 512 bytes, and clusters uh, are always multiples of uh, two, right? So it can be um, um, uh, it can be actually one. So I, I should probably correct myself and say not really multiples of two, but powers of two. So two raised to the zeroth power is one. So uh, one is okay. Uh, so cluster can be one uh, sector size and that's what typically is happening on the floppy drive with FAT12 uh, file system. Uh, and we can go to two sectors, four sectors, eight and so forth. Uh, in our case, by the way, uh, after we formatted it, um, uh, the cluster size is uh, 16, uh, uh, 16 kilobyte. Um, so uh, that uh, translates to 32 sectors. So our size here on the system is uh, 32 uh, sectors per cluster. Each cluster has its own unique address and that's obvious because that's basically cluster number is uh, placement of the data and must have unique placement and that location is specified by the cluster number and on file allocation uh, table uh, systems the first cluster uh, that can exist has address 2. So there is no uh, addressable clusters 0 or 1. They just simply don't exist and using this number would just uh, uh, make system crash. The first, the lowest uh, cluster address is cluster 2. Uh, 